Well, Tina, it's good to see everyone out. I'm so happy to be able to do this. It's still not idea. It's still not what I fully desire. I wish I could see everybody face to face, shake hands and enjoy uh, catching up and seeing how everybody is doing, but this is better than nothing. And so it's so thankful to be able to do this worship service in the parking lot and so happy that we have everybody to be able to join and be able to do this. I know I'm, I thank everybody for saying thank you to me in case we're trying to get things set it up, but it, it couldn't be done if no one would be willing to come out. So I'm thankful for you guys, thankful to be able to do this. Um, again, we're on uh, Facebook, though, if you are able to get that phone out and share that and uh, do it on the church side, not the group side. Otherwise, it doesn't get to everybody else. Um, but uh, let that be out there so that everyone else can join if they're stuck at home. So. You open your Bibles and follow along. We're talking about spreading the word. We're going to talk about evangelizing this morning and looking to the scriptures and seeing what it has to say and talking about the things that we can be doing in order to be out spreading the word of God. And so if you open your Bibles and follow along, that's what we're going to talk about this morning. And so in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, we're going to start. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. We're going to read there. And see what our Lord and said, Lord says to, of course, the apostles here as he reads, as we read. And he says, it says, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. And so as we look to the word here, as Jesus says, he says, go, go and make disciples, go and spread the word of God, baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so we're supposed to be going out and spreading the word. And we see the same thing as we look at the account in Mark, in Mark chapter 16, and you read there in verse 15, Mark 16 and verse 15 says, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Again, we're supposed to be spreading the word. We're supposed to be spreading the good news and preach to everyone, to spread that word to everyone that we can. And so, once again, a lot of people get caught up in holding these verses and saying, well, that's to the apostles. And yes, they had a special command here to go and spread it to everyone, to go in. Of course, they had to travel and start the church, and they had to go and spread the word of God as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. We can take the example of the disciple Philip and look and see that the, the Holy Spirit uh, guided him and where to go as he went to the eunuch after preaching to the Samaritans, and that after he had preached to the eunuch that he was taken up somewhere else. And so they had a special command in that first part of the, the church beginning, but we still have the command to spread the good news, to go out and preach the word. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, if you turn along with me there, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and reading in verse 2, 2 Timothy 4, and read along with me in verse 2, it says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. And in, so here he's being told, be ready always. It's something that we should always be ready to do to preach the word. In verse 5 it says, but you be watchful in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. And so here, once again, Timothy is being told to go and spread the good news. Go and preach the word of God. It's a command that we need to understand that we should all be following along is to be ready to preach the word. Now, I understand not everybody is a full time preacher. Not everybody's an evangelist. Not everyone's a teacher in the classrooms, but we all have our part in spreading the word of God. We all should be ready and studying the word of God so that we can answer questions if they come to us. In Hebrews chapter five and verse twelve. Hebrews chapter 5, and reading there in verse 12, it says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. 
for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age, that is, those who by reason use or you of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So it says, this time you ought to be teachers. It means you've grown in the word of God. From the time that you first read your Bible or from the time that you understood that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, that he had died for your sins and that you needed to be baptized in order to have your sins washed away. And you, you committed yourself to that. You made a covenant with God. Now you should be growing. Now you should be adding to your faith as we see there in 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 and you read there in verse 5 it says, But also for this very reason... Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. We should be adding to our faith. We should be growing in the grace and knowledge of the truth as we see in 2 Peter 3 and verse 18. 2 Peter 3 and verse 18, it says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be the glory and be the glory both now and forever. Amen. And so here it says, it says, grow in the grace and knowledge. We should be adding to our faith. We should be growing and studying and searching the scriptures daily. First Peter chapter three, and verse 15. First Peter three, and verse 15 says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks the reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Have any good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. So again, at the very least, we study so that we are ready to give an answer. When someone asks you for your faith, someone asks you why you gathered up on the first day of the week, someone asks you why you got baptized, someone asks you why we don't have instrumental music, why is it you follow these teachings, you can give them an answer. You may not be the best teacher out there. But you can show them book, chapter, and verse where to go. And if they want to study further, then you can try to set up an appointment to study with me or to study with someone else, whoever they'd be comfortable to sit down and talk with. But we all have our part in spreading the good news. We need to be studying the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved unto God, a workman who not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. We need to study we need to open up our Bibles and search the scriptures. And again, I know we're not all teachers. In fact, in James chapter 3, in James chapter 3 and verse 1, it tells us don't let all be teachers because you're going to have a stricter judgment. You know, we understand that we need to be cautious in what we say because when we speak, we need to make sure we're speaking the oracles of God and we don't want to mislead somebody. But we all have a part in spreading the good news. We all have a part in spreading the word of God. We are to be a light of this world. If you turn along with me to Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 13 it says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it on the basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It says, by the life we live, people will understand that you are separate from this world, that you have been called out from this world because you shine your light. Because you follow the commands that Christ has given to you. Now we also have a parable of the sower, a parable of the seeds. That as they go out and he spreads the seeds, some fall on some not so good ground where nothing grows. Some fall in a spot where it starts to grow but then withers away. Some falls and the crows take it, right? But some seed fall on good ground. There are people who want to know the truth. There are those who are waiting for someone to help guide them in the right direction. And just like the eunuch who was reading Isaiah. 
as he was reading and Philip came up to him and he said, how can I understand these things without a teacher, without someone to guide me in the right direction? And therefore we have to be ready to guide people in the right direction or try to do our part to help people in the right direction. Now, during these times, it may be a little harder to try to evangelize. We're not necessarily able to say, hey, well, won't you come on over to my house and we'll have a Bible study. During these times, it's a little harder to get out and to go door knocking and to go out and pass out flyers because people don't want to be around other people. Look at all of you. You won't come shake my hand. But we do have a way of doing it just like we are right now. We're on Facebook. We're streaming it live. And I know not everybody has it. And I know those who, some who do have it have maybe two or three friends. The only reason they got it is so that they can watch sermons online. But understand we have so much technology that we can be spreading the word and helping the word get out there. And that can be part of your work can be part of the collective work of here at West Side Church of Christ, but it also be your individual work as you spread the good news. Um, this past week, I had someone call and ask if we wanted help with our website. And, of course, you know, they're trying to make money themselves and try to do good with their business. And, and I was willing to just at least listen to them to try to get some good ideas and see what they, they were offering. When you sit down and think about it, there's so much that is on the internet. So much with technology out there. And there's so much that people use for bad, right? You can use this as hackers are out there trying to steal information. People use it to cyber bully other people. People use it to look at things they should not be looking at. And so there's so much bad out there, but it can be used for so much good also. That we can take this Technology, take the internet, take Facebook, take YouTube, take Google, any of that to help further spread the word of God. We can do that by sharing. We can do that by your own videos, by you posting your own verses on your own page. You don't have to just share my stuff and the church stuff. You can do your own thing as long as you're following the Bible. I wanted to take a good example that I had just recently done yesterday till today. That yesterday around 11 o'clock, and now understand this doesn't mean that it's doing what I hope it's doing, but it means there's potential for it to be doing good. That yesterday at 11 o'clock in the morning, just before noon, there was only 137 likes on our church's website, our church's Facebook site. And so I got on there and I pressed invite all to my friends. Casey ended up doing the same thing after a little while. And I was getting excited as I saw people accepting that invitation to like our page, to start following our page. This morning around 830, we had 204 likes. All right. We, we have added that many to the Facebook page. Once again, they, they can like it and then unfollow it. You know, that's their choice. But I've done my part in planting the seed, right? That's all we're told to do is we're to go spread the word. They can choose to ignore it or they can choose to listen to it. Now, I also took the opportunity to sit down and try to look at a few of your pages and see how many friends each person has. I thought I was pretty popular until I looked at other people's and see how many friends they got. There are some who only have maybe a few friends, others who have over 100 there are those who a lot of them have, like uh, I do, uh, have over 500 on Facebook. I don't know that I could probably name that many. There are a few out there who are close or over a 1,000. And there's, I think, one who had over 2,000. And if you were to go to Facebook, go to our page, press invite, how many people might accept that invite? Better yet, if you share the sermons or share Bible verses or do your own video and share a talk about the Word of God and put it on your page, that many people that are friends with you will see what you put on your page. Have the opportunity to see what's on your page. Once again, not everybody's going to do it. Not everybody's going to watch it. Not everybody's going to listen to it. 
but you're putting it out there. You're planting the seed, just like we are supposed to. We read the Bible, we go through the book of Acts, understand the apostles didn't baptize everybody they ran into. They didn't convert everyone they went into. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been crucified by the people. They wouldn't have been persecuted and been stoned to death and been killed for spreading the good news. So we understand that we're not going to get everybody. But there is so much that we can be doing still, even as we're stuck at home and spreading the word of God. There are so many other congregations out there that are preaching the word also. And so you can look up their videos, watch them, make sure it's the truth that is being taught. And if you feel that it is the truth, then you can share that page. You can like it. You write comments, emoji face it. The more that you do those things, the more they get spread. That, that's how they get spread out there. And the thing is, is we have that opportunity. And I know just by our group page that we have 40 some members on our group page. Not all of them are members here at Westside. We've added a few so that they could join in on the Bible study because they were going to be visiting or maybe they're from Southside or something. But at least 30 of them, I think, at least 30 of them are members here at Westside, which means I know at least 30 of you have Facebook accounts. It means 30 of you can be sharing this information, sharing and helping spread the word for the congregation but also doing your individual work and spreading the good news. Because as we studied the Bible just now, go into all the world and preach to every creature. Now, before this technology, it had been hard for us to go and spread the word to all the world, but technically we have that opportunity. And once again, I'm not a saying like these posts that you sometimes see, if you share this page, you'll be blessed if you share 10 within the next five minutes. It's not the way it works. The way it works is that you do the work of God that he's commanded you to do. And let us spread the good word as we have the opportunity to do. I hope that we continue to spread it as we have the opportunity. We continue to live the good life. And I don't want to leave without extending the Lord's invitation today. We should always be extending that invitation. We should always try to be preaching the word, whether you're getting your phone out and making phone calls, whether you're sending out post uh, postcards and however you can do it. I know when I was in preacher training, my, my uh, the guy who I studied under, Randy Duvall, he had me just grab a phone book, grab a phone, and just start calling people in the phone book in the local area and asking if they would like to have a Bible study. There's always something that you can do. Now, I've not tried that since, but I had done it once. There's always something we can be doing to spread God's word, trying to plant the seed. Let us be doing our part and following faithfully and keeping his command. If you're here or if you're on Facebook and you need to obey the gospel, let us know. We'll help you in any way we can to make sure that you can get baptized to wash away your sins. If you need the prayers of the congregation, once again, contact us, phone call us, message us, comment. And we'll make sure that we're praying for you also. If there's anything we can do for you, please let it be known as we sing this song. Number 56, Where Could I Go? Living below in this old sinful world, comfort I give from God's own word. Striving alone to face temptation sore, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go, oh where could I go, seeking a refuge for my soul? Needing a friend to save me in the end, where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? My fear is grand with friends I love so dear. Come.
comfort I give from God's own word. Yeah, when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord?